I know this is already going to be a rant and everything, like one of those unstructured, goofy, uh, yapping videos. This is just, this is all to get into the habit of recording, which I did for like a, half a summer, uh, two years ago now, ish, or one year, I don't remember. This is all to do that again. So I know this is already going to be a rant, but I want to, I want to emphasize just how bad the system that we have in place for public school is. It takes up so much time. It's, it wouldn't be that big of an issue if it didn't go to three o'clock. It doesn't need to go to three o'clock. I can get like all, all of what we're currently getting in. Just like more, we've already kind of had this idea, uh, being floated around now. Because before we had this 8A, B day system where you'd have five classes one day and five different classes the next day. And you'd have like 70 minutes per class. And now we're on a consistent eight class schedule where it's 45 minutes, but it's all the same classes every day. With this system, uh, as one of the teachers have pointed out, people don't do silly goofball stuff now. They are right to the point. They don't waste time. I think we could do that even better. I think we could just cut out a class or two or shorten some of them, or do something. Like, I hate, I hate the public school problem, because all the situa- all the solutions cause horrendous problems for other people. Like, the people that want to go to college, it causes problems for them. But the people like me, and I'm pretty sure the majority of people that go to school, who don't plan to go to college, suffer so bad, we have to sit in a school for seven hours to get a diploma. Five days a week. Seven hour. we are in school, I am in school, for seven and a half hours out of every day for five days out of the week. That is way too much. That is way too much in order for it to be the way that it is. Because it's not just that I'm sitting there working for seven and a half hours. That would be fine. I would do that perfectly fine. I would sit here on this and work for seven and a half hours straight if I could right now. I would literally just replace what I'm doing at school with this. YouTube is... I should preface this with the fact that none, no internet access is good for a kid. Your kid shouldn't have internet access at all. Because there's always a wrong choice to be made on the internet. No matter what platform you're on, there's always uh, sexual content on the internet everywhere. I know because when I uh, struggled with pornography, it was everywhere. You can, you can find anything anywhere. If you try hard enough, you can find something... That you can manage with the... I don't want to be too graphic. Because, like... I'm trying to make the transition over to being a Christian channel. There, You'll always find something that you'll manage with. I always found something on YouTube. Especially when I looked for it. And there's always stuff on every platform. The saying that sex sells is very, very true, because it does. Humans are, it's like the whole, uh, you, humans are wired to interpret sex as interesting because of primal stuff and reproduction and whatnot. So if you look for it, you'll find it, because it's everywhere, because people know that you'll, that the average person will click on it more often than if the sexual appeal wasn't there. 
So the problem with having kids have access to YouTube, and I mean just like generally, just anyone below the age of like 15, I say around 15 is when I started to do things for not just fun, when I started to worry about my future. So around like 15 and below, and especially like 12 to 15, because the 12 to 15 range is really when the problems come around. 15 to 20 range, fi oh, 12 to 15 range is like around the time that puberty starts. And then you have up to the point of them being more concerned and worried about their future. I've been told that 15 was a really young age to discover how terrible pornography was. So it might not even be this low. It might be like 16 or 17. But I'm just basing it off of my experience. I don't have a lot of like testimonies that I can look back on and be like, oh, I did. I stopped in my bad habits at this age. I don't have that. A lot of people think that if they put like safe search and blockers on their on their stuff, then the kids that access that won't have that problem. So, you know, everyone already kind of knows that the internet is a dangerous place. That much is obvious. There's a lot of stuff you can find on the internet. There's a market for just about anything. The problem with pornography now is that you can get tons of it for free and anyone that has access to the internet can get to it. And that's all you need anymore. It's way easier to access a lot of pornography than it was before. That is the main problem with it. But if you block the pornography, then surely it's not a problem. Wrong. YouTube, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever your kids might have access to, very easily can find pornography on there. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of uh, Snapchat and Instagram girls likes to really show off their bikinis. There's a lot of that. But on YouTube, that's not as big of a problem. There's still problems on YouTube. Like I said, if you look for it, you'll find softcore. And something I've noticed that I didn't even know was happening until like a month ago is that there are bots that comment in some YouTube comment section. They'll just comment like random bland comments. I'll put a couple on screen now. No, screw showing you a picture. I'm going to record a whole new video for this because I just discovered a rabbit hole. I wasted a lot of time on this rabbit hole and I want to feel like I am going to get something out of it. So, uh, here. So, I should have tons of screenshots from this, but this whole porn bot comment thing, it goes, it goes really far. It's really weird, because it doesn't seem like all of them are bots. Or maybe they all are bots. And bots are getting a lot smarter at, like, commenting based on the video. Because on a random music video that was on trending, I have no idea who Sabrina Carpenter is. But I noticed that there were some generic comments that had her name in it. I thought if I clicked on it, I wouldn't see anything. But I saw links to the the garbage i saw the links from what i can tell a lot of them are dead links a lot of them are dead links for some reason i don't know why that is either i don't understand any of this i don't get it i don't get why everyone has their own personalized website for all of this i don't get why half of them are taken down what are these people doing that gets them taken down i don't know i'm i'm going crazy because I didn't think it mattered this much. I just wanted like three different channels. Like three completely different channels to take these screenshots from. So I got some from the Trent Twins uh, videos. I got some from Sam Sulik's videos. And I was going around on other videos trying to find him. I was like, no, I should go on trending to go find some more over there. Because I couldn't really find any in uh, in my own subscriptions. Because either 
because they don't seem to appear on family friendly videos. They seem to only appear on like super popular, uh, like 13 plus type videos, you know, like gaming videos where they curse a lot, uh, depictions of violence, things like that. But I just, I just got here. I didn't, ex I didn't know that this was going to be a rabbit hole. Anyway, the reason why it's a rabbit hole is not because there's porn bots everywhere. The biggest thing that I discovered in doing this was that some of them might not be bots. Some of them were able to accurately talk about the stuff in the video. And I'm not joking, no one caught on. There were 18 replies on one of these bots. And from, I didn't read all 18 replies, but none of the people that I saw caught on. None of them did. Because no one would expect a bot to be a able to accurately describe the things in the videos. I didn't expect that. I didn't know bots had come that far, if it is a bot, and not someone spending their own time on this. One of those accounts had over a thousand subscribers, which is crazy. Because if they're bot, then that's some insane devotion. I don't know how much a thousand subscribers cost to buy, but it can't be a tiny amount. It can't be tiny. And if they're all genuinely gotten, then that's worse. Because that shows that it, there's like a thousand people out there that actually use this strategy to find new websites. Which would make the whole, which would drive the point home about how dangerous this is for kids and everything. But I digress on that, because that's going to be discussed pointing in this video that you're watching now. This is going to be added, this is added post-recording. I just wanted to let you know that porn, the porn bot thing goes way deeper than I thought it did previously. I mentioned it for like 17 seconds. It probably, I, I'm... I'm going off a random guess. I don't mention it for very long in the video. But it goes a lot deeper than I thought. The, the co There are two comments on the Sabrina Carpenter music video called, like, Taste or Tasteless. One of them had 4,300 likes and was, like, in the top 10 comments. Top 10 comments was of a random bot and or maybe person trying to bait people into clicking on their profile. Crazy. Insane. Get your kids off of YouTube. Oh my gosh. This is horrible. They obviously go for the higher ranking YouTubers, but that's fine. So, obviously, they would. And if you click on their profile, they'll have probably some like bot subscribers and their bio has a link tree maybe i think usually it's just a direct link to only fans but sometimes it's a link tree because they like to hide behind link trees so you have all of like the sexual desensitization problems as well but even if even if they don't see that there's a massive problem in shorts. And I'm not going to sit here and talk about all the dopamine stuff. Because if you're on this side of YouTube that rants about how unsafe the internet is and how terrible content, uh, how terrible watching too much content is, you're probably already aware of the whole dopamine stuff. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not even going to say whether or not I believe it because it's up in the air right now. And I'm sure things can change in the future for either direction. But the thing that I'm going to try and say here is not just that all these dopamine things can addict you to it or anything like that. It is literally the main thing. The number one thing that people know about short form content and when it's good the number one thing that people always count on is that it will burn hours fast. The biggest problem I have with short form and scrolling is that the minutes just whiz by really fast. I have not personally ever scrolled on TikTok, Instagram Reels, or YouTube Shorts. 
I think any more than like five minutes and I've never done it on my own phone mostly because I've never owned these two but YouTube shorts I've never uh, I've never scrolled on it I'll click on a YouTube short if I find the title or something interesting but then I'll click off of it when I'm done watching it I don't scroll because I know the the trap of scrolling I know I know that if I sit there and scroll I'm going to burn time that I could be using doing something else and I feel like I'm going to have to emphasize this. Uh, people on the internet tend to see when someone judges. When someone tells you that something is bad, they'll always take that as like judging the people that do it. I don't intend to judge people that watch shorts or play video games several hours a day or even do drugs. I don't intend to judge people that do that. What I am saying here is that I, I, as long as you're aware of what those things do as long as you're aware what your habits are doing back to you because everything's in a feedback loop you do actions and they make your beliefs and thoughts and then your beliefs and thoughts will uh your beliefs and values will determine your actions and then it's in a feedback loop all the time of course it doesn't mean that it's like a uh, an inevitable addiction loop. That's not evidence towards addiction. That's just how, uh, <laughs> that's just how behavior works. What we think we'll get out of something will determine what we do, and then we'll do it, and then that will help determine what we think about something. It's just a, it's just a constant feedback loop. I don't intend to judge anyone for anything as long as you are aware of what the habit you are doing does to you. All, all the cons. As long as you are aware of the cons. Like, I don't have a problem with people that smoke. I have a problem with people that smoke that either think it's healthy for them or they think that they can't stop for some reason as if some other force is controlling them to do that I want people to have that freedom and it's not just because I think that everyone should have the choice it's that trying to judge you into something is not going to work anyway that's just human nature so be aware that I am not judging at all when I am talking about like how terrible I think scrolling and mindlessly watching content for hours is I'm not judging you for doing that. If you do that, go ahead. I can't stop you. I'm just trying to make you aware of the problems that it will cause. As long as you're willing to face and solve those problems, then that's fine. Me personally, I haven't been able to watch any more than like 30 minutes of semi-entertainment stuff because I just can't find the reason to do it anymore. I just can't. I don't find entertainment mediums very useful. Like, unless I think I gain something else out of it, I I just never do it. Uh, like, I used to watch gaming channels, and now I don't. Because I just don't see the reason in watching gaming channels. The only reason I could have for watching gaming channels is if specifically my gaming takes off and I want to make better gaming content, then watching those specific videos is a fine way of doing that. That's fine. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to because I know that with gaming content, there's, there's a whole dopamine thing, which is a giant gray blur right now. I don't think it causes addiction, because I don't think addiction actually exists. If you read the freedom model, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll get to that eventually in some other video. But I don't think addiction exists. So, I think dopamine can help a, can help push us towards doing a specific action. Like, doing drugs a lot will wire your brain to do more drugs, because you find it easy. It's really easy to do something that you've done over a hundred times. That's not addiction, 
That's just how humans work. I would not call being able to start a recording on this computer an addiction just because I've done it over three dozen times. I wouldn't call it an addiction because I've just been able to do it. I wouldn't call bench pressing or deadlifting or squatting an addiction, even though I've done all of those for well over a thousand times by this point. I wouldn't call them addictions. I've just been able to do it so much that I do it more because I know how to do it. That doesn't make an addiction. Oh my gosh, I get so off track. The dopamine gray area. I don't want to, I don't want to mess with that if it's more powerful than is now being thought to be. I think it's just to be on the safe side. I like to like not do a lot. Of entertainment. I don't like to stimulate my brain too much. It already gets super stimulated at school because of how public school is. I'm around the average person all the time. When they're not at school, they're playing video games or they're watching YouTube shorts. So they send me memes, they send me videos. I see plenty at school. I don't need any more at home. But I don't like to stimulate my brain very much. Sundays are specifically a day to where I can dedicate it to observing the Sabbath. I don't work. I don't record or edit on Sundays. I don't even really get on my computer most of the time. I'll get on my computer, f or no, I'll get on my computer for a scripture study meeting. And then I'll, I'll get off and I'll go read scriptures until it's time for bed or dinner, whichever comes first I guess but the other big reason is just for the time I don't get a lot out of watching entertainment I don't even get like anything at all not from my perspective because I don't find there's very different perspectives a lot of people think boredom is this horrendous thing that must be avoided at all costs I don't see it that way I don't see what kills people when they're bored I just don't see it. It's literally nothing. It's the absence of stimulation, which is healthier for us than it is unhealthy for us. You already know about the dopamine stuff, because if you haven't looked it up already, I've mentioned it several times, but the dopamine, the whole dopamine thing on YouTube is the idea that this content overstimulates our brain. And it, you know, causes a bunch of dopamine rushing. And then that will cancel out uh, certain dopamine receptors. And it'll make it more difficult to get dopamine from normal de-stressors of life. Like uh, the natural de-stressors of like sleeping and just resting. It's harder to get dopamine from stuff that doesn't have as big of a release. You don't want to, you don't want to overstimulate your brain, not because it will addict you to something, but because, one, headaches hurt. And I know for a fact that technology is the problem. Technology is, technology and lack of outside time are the problem for headaches. A lot of people think they have chronic headaches. I don't know how many of that is true. I think a lot of people just stay inside for most of their lives. Because I, I only struggle with headaches when school is in session, when I'm inside seven hours a day looking at a computer screen for most of it. That is when I suffer. I don't have that problem on Saturday and Sunday. I'll go outside and I'll read scriptures on Sunday and I don't have that problem. That can't be a coincidence. I'm just realizing how sensitive the mic is only specifically to me. This is a really good mic system. So it's just like... And the problem with the stimulation of the mind thing is that it by itself doesn't feel that bad. The after effects do. And just with how kids' brains work, they don't really distinguish between the long-term and short-term gratification. They want what feels the best right now instead of what feels good now and will feel the best later. Me personally, I, the best example of this for me 
would be working out because I feel good in the moment. I love the feeling of working out and I get benefits from it, obviously. So I have come to make the distinction that working out is like the number one thing that I should be doing as a young man. Absolutely. Like working out and working. These are the number two things. Uh, top two. Top two things. But when it comes to children, they have both been taught that work is boring and have been told that... And just generally think that work is boring because they think that work specifically entails a 9 to 5 or like an office job or something like that because of how they grow up and all that. And they're, and they're, they're kid brains, so they don't have the whole, like, gratification thing. They think, I feel good, or I feel bad, and they always want to move towards more good. So, especially when people are starting out, working out, like, the first three months, as long as they can stay consistent for, like, three months, then they're gonna stay, they're gonna stay most of the time. During that first three months... The pain is a big problem because they're just not used to embracing that pain most of the time. Embracing pain and learning to see it as progress is a big step in like growing up, in becoming stronger. Realizing that failure is not only important for growth, but in stuff like working out, it is actually what you should strive for. Specifically in exercising and all that. But it takes a little bit to like fully get that. At least like on a whole level. And children will take way longer to get there. So they'll always choose like the short term stuff. And the problem with it is that as they build up those habits of just going for the easier stuff rather than asking out their friends that have either said no the past few times or of like you know they just don't find hanging out with specific friends as fun instead of choosing the friends they choose to stay inside and do nothing all day and on the internet itself this has become pretty normalized like the idea uh, especially on reddit especially on reddit uh, I remember seeing several memes, uh, when I had read it, of, like, you know, it being normal to them to tell every friend that they had in, they had invites from to say that I'm busy and then go and watch, like, you, YouTube or TV shows or something or browse Reddit. That will cause a huge problem in the future. One, because no matter what you say or think, it doesn't matter. It is just an eternal fact that people that grow up on purely the internet will have bad social skills. That is just true. People that grow up only on the internet and that never socialize with people, the number one thing, the only way to get good at really socializing with other people is to talk to other people. If they don't do that, and specifically if they don't do that in person, then it won't happen. They're not gonna gain that skill. So they're gonna they're gonna hunker down and you have the reinforcement of them already being bad at social skills. So they don't like want to go out because they're gonna get embarrassed. They're gonna go through some big thing. They're going to say me too, or they're going to say you too, when the waitress tells them to have a good meal. They're so horrified of that. They're so horrified of embarrassment, because embarrassment feels terrible. And I just wish more, more of us were taught that embarrassment's not actually a problem. It's not the end of the world. We shouldn't strive for embarrassment. I'm not saying that embarrassment is a good thing. Like, it doesn't end the world. 
I have had several accounts where I embarrass myself, like just trying to make small talk to people and like mispronouncing stuff, doing dumb stuff like that. And it makes no impact on today. It makes zero difference on what's happening. I'm so tired of being interrupted. Oh my gosh. This video has been interrupted like three times. This is going to be a really long, lengthy video because I keep forgetting where I am. So kids don't have the sort of thing that they need to distinguish between like long-term good and short-term bad. They see short-term bad as horrendous. So they just choose to not go for it, especially since it's not like the average person thing to go out and embrace the long-term, the more long-term solutions to stuff. A lot, it's very normal to like sit on your phone for hours every day. Average screen time of, of an adult, I think, is four hours on their phone a day. I think that's the daily average. Horrendous. If that starts early, they will learn to prefer that way more. And then they'll go out into the world and then they have to embrace the stuff like the nine to five. And they're told to have ambitions, to have dreams. But then they're also told that working towards it will suck. And it will. But they don't add in the fact that work can be fun. You just have to sacrifice, like, everything else. When someone goes into business, they have to cut off a lot of old friend ties. That's just the way that it is. With most, like, business type things, if they want to become a millionaire, they have to cut off, like, old friends. Or otherwise just not hang out with them. Because they have to devote far more time into their, into their work than doing anything else. So, it's, it's a very complex situation, and I don't expect it to have a real solution. Which is why I'm trying to target this more towards, like, people that plan to be parents in the future. Because even as the internet keeps very slowly going from a lawless wasteland to, like, government-regulated, is very slowly making that transition. And not even I can guarantee that my kids will have a safe internet if I give it to them. I don't plan on giving it to them at all. I plan on them exploring the world instead of the digital ones and zeros of a bunch of pixels on a screen. I want them to go out the, into the real world and explore the real world. I don't want them to sit here and figure out what they think is coolest based on a video made about a career choice. I want them to go out and explore that. I want them to go out and try things. I, I'm grateful for what I have. Of course, I always sit here and wonder about the life that could have been if I grew up physically active. If I grew up, you know, not watching the horrible stuff that I did on Reddit and uh, the hub. But, in general, I am grateful for where I'm at. But the problem with the kids growing up like this is that most of them won't snap out of it like I did. I'm very lucky to have that. And I'm saved by the grace of God that I'm able to have discovered Him. I am able to have all these nice things like a good mental health and decent physical health now because it didn't appeal to me as much to 
sit there and do all those bad habits after the bad things were shown to me, after the bad was shown to me, it didn't appeal to me as much. But it still took well over a year. I should, I should mention that I made a video on, on this channel, on this channel. Uh, I think it was called the easy peasy way to quit porn. Something like that. When you saw that video, I went on to watch porn several more times because I kept struggling with it. No, no one at all should have to struggle through the means of thinking that they are addicted to something on the internet. I wish that the Freedom Model was a book published everywhere. But that's the thing. Internet access, internet access and putting guidelines, restrictions, and anything on top of a uh, kid's viewing nature, that is on the parent, 100%. We can't keep blaming all of our failures on, like, society and stuff. Society is uncool, and the whole idea of that, like, I don't like how normal it is to look at smut and porn and drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes. I don't like how normal all of that is. I don't like that m the majority of rap music videos are the way that they are. I don't like that. I don't like that the majority of heavy metal, maybe not the majority, but like the the stereotypical heavy metal and hard rock tends to be anti-Christian. I despise that. I despise that it's so normal to be uh, wicked, as biblical terms would put it. I don't like that it's so normal to look at other women, to look at women and lust after them. I don't like that that's so normal in certain, in a lot of settings. I want my kids to grow up in that, like, Christian environment to where they'll know that that's bad from the get-go, and so they never engage in it to begin with. I want them to be able to I want them to have discovered it from my own personal experience that none of it, not just that it's all bad, but that it's not worth it. It's just not worth it for what it provides. What everyone determines is their own path of success and what they think makes them successful is up to them. For some people, that is making tens of millions of dollars. For other people, that is serving the word of Christ and God to the day that they die, no matter what other costs have to be given up. For some people, it's more bland, and it's more like kind of boring to the average person's view. But it's not, it's not that anyone should have to stick to a certain rule or thing. As we grow, with age, from the day that we are born, up to our death, is always this constant process of like making who we are. I don't think that life is actually about self-discovery the way that it has been usually framed throughout what I've been taught. I think it's more about making ourselves. And the problem is that I I spent years on the internet and I was making a horrible version of myself, a horrible version that I would never want to go back to now. The last time that I actually engaged in any sort of really wicked behavior was months ago now and I don't want to go back because I'm just tired. I'm tired of it. It's so tiring. By all means, what a person chooses to do is what they will choose to do. No one can stop them. But I'm hoping that I can convince people with this that 
kids should generally not be on the internet because it's not everyone else's job to make sure that your kids grow up perfectly fine and mentally stable. That's not everyone else's job. Letting the internet parent children is a horrible mistake. And to be honest, it's just, frankly, when you put it like that, it just sounds horrible. Because, like, listening to me say that out loud, letting the internet, which is an inanimate object of ones and zeros, in which millions of different people that you don't know interact with and share content on every day, Parent your kids for you. It's just, it's a really risky gamble. It's a really bad gamble. And it doesn't work most of the time. You already know the stereotypes of like the shut-ins, the furries, the weebs, all of those kinds of people. You already know the stereotypes. But I'm also talking about the people that will, the average person that goes through life and they don't, they don't amount to anything that they wanted to achieve. I think one of the worst things of all time is how human nature uh, kind of restricts us from like getting to where we would actually want to be in life. And the internet is has been the Biggest example of this, 100%, the number one example on how this can happen, because we have all these things on the internet that constantly distract us from where we want to get in life. And I want to emphasize that all of these distractions are vain. All of them don't mean anything. What you want to achieve in life is what you should focus on 100%. Entertainment, for the love of all things holy, entertainment is not an end-all. Like, this one PDF says that I read, like, two years ago. I am not against anything on TV. I am not against any particular series or franchises or anything like that. I am against entertainment as a means to an end. I do not care if people like watching certain shows. I don't like when people will sit there and actively search for new shows to watch. I think that's a waste of time. Because people will... That's, that's the obvious thing. Is that, you know, you shouldn't judge everyone else. But, like, is that what they really want to do with their life? Do they want to sit on their couch for the rest of their life like just watching tv and movies or playing video games or watching youtube it doesn't matter is this there's so much more to life than this little bubble like than a little bubble with the screen inside of our room or living room there's so much more to life and i just think it's it's really a shame if someone wants to accomplish things, but are continually holding themselves back in order to engage in fruitless, vain entertainment mediums. I think that's where the problem resides. Again, if they make that choice by themselves and they continue to choose doing it afterwards, then that's fine by me. They can do that if they want. I want people to take a good, hard, long look at their life and figure out what they want to get out of it. That's the number one thing. My number one thing of what I want to get out of life is that I want to get back. I want to get back to living with God again. I want to live with God again. I want to be able to have lived a good life to where 
I can be on my deathbed and not say something dumb like I'm too young or, you know, I wish I did more. It's like we can always wish we did more, but there is an end to how much we can do because we will all die on this earth eventually. The first death, if you are Christian, the first death will always happen. That's guaranteed. We will always eventually perish. Our heart will cease beating and our brain will cease function eventually. It doesn't matter if that day will be tomorrow or if it'll be a hundred years from now, it will happen. Immortality is, as a realistic sense, is inachievable. Actual immortality is complete fantasy. The number one thing is I want to live a life where I live, where I leave a mark on this world and go into the next world spotless and clean. I want to, I want to make enough money to bring all of my family, like, kind of out of poverty and also ensure that my own family that I will make is on really good terms like house and everything and they have all these opportunities you know I won't say opportunities that I don't I, that I don't have I think I have plenty of opportunities and I just don't take advantage of most of them I've got to get like a mat or something over this wall I think I have had plenty of opportunities and I've just not taken most of them the bigger problem is it I want to make sure that they're opportunity I want to make sure that they're taught right I want to make sure that they're taught time management that they're taught uh, how to get the most out of life and what that means I want and of course I'm not gonna be like as blanket statement I'm, I'm not gonna be like oh you can do whatever you want of course to my kids I'm gonna be like you're gonna do the right things because they're my kids, and you can't tell me otherwise. I'm going to tell them that they're going to do the right things and receive the right rewards, or they will do the wrong things and receive, you know, punishment from, like, hell. Punishment for laziness is uh, not making money. Basic stuff like that. I'm going to teach them all these things, and they're going to know them. I've got to end this. So, like, the number one thing that I ask out of anyone that listens to any of these sorts of videos, I want you to figure out what you want to get out of life. In a true, like, wholehearted, not chasing the desires that have been implanted in you by social media or anything like that. I want to become a content creator because I want to expose all of this stuff from content itself. And then after a few years, I'll probably just like work for my church or something. You know, just do stuff. I want to do fun things. I want to go out there. But I can't do that while I'm poor. Not really, anyway. I can't really do that the way that I want to while I'm poor. So, I'm going to make money first, and then make a family. And then after, like, I'm, like, 50 years old, I'm going to have vacations and stuff. But the number one thing is that I'm going to carve my own path. And I think that's very important. As Napoleon Bonaparte said, There is no immortality but the memory that is left in the minds of men. To have lived without glory, without leaving a trace of one's existence, is not to have lived at all. I think that, at least in the sense of trying to accomplish what you want to do, I think there's no reason to not try and be the best in that unless of course you don't want to in which case no one's gonna make you but no one's gonna make you do the right or the wrong things it's all up to you and up to what you want to do 
That is the eternal truth. The number one truth is that all humans have mental autonomy and that all humans have free will. Nothing controls you. So nothing can make you make the right or wrong decisions. There's no excuse for doing the bad things. And there's no like reason for why you can't do the good things. It's all up to what you want to do. So do what you want to do. But do what you actually want to do. Do what you want to truly get out of life. I think if everyone knew that, then we wouldn't have the health, the mental health problems that we have in the world. I genuinely, I genuinely think this is the number one thing, and it's going to be the number one thing I preach for a while. Do what you want to do out of life. Do what you want to do and do what you need to do in order to get what you want out of life. Number one thing.